Hi, um, we're from Conestoga High School. We're from Berwyn, PA, so right outside Philadelphia area. Uh, my name is Daniel, and alongside my team, I'll let them introduce themselves. Um, I'm Evelyn. I'm Evan. I'm Vincent. And I'm James, and we're all seniors. Great. Okay, go ahead. Do you have a preference for like whether or not we go to the Whatever you prefer. You, there, you can use that mic up there, or you can sit. And can we just, can I just test the slides real quick? Ah, uh, yep, go ahead. Okay, sweet. All set? Yep. Okay. Okay. In recent years, electrification has risen to the forefront of the tech world. Often overlooked, however, is a new cousin to a 200-year-old piece of technology, the bicycle. Lately, e-bikes have become the most demanded electric vehicle on the market, and today we'll seek to determine the reasons behind their popularity and their industry potential. We first model how many e-bikes will be sold in the coming years. Next, we explore what factors contribute the most to the growth of e-bike sales. And finally, we assess the impact of this growth on our daily lives. Question one asks us to predict future e-bike sales in the US. To do so, we use MATLAB to perform an exponential regression on EU and US e-bike sales, using the EU's regression to combat inaccuracies posed by that of the US. Before creating our model, we first laid down a few assumptions. First, we had to assume that there wouldn't be any significant technological advancements that would drastically change transportation infrastructure, and this is justified by the fact that breakthrough technologies take years to develop and are oftentimes unpredictable. We also assumed that trends for e-bike sales would remain consistent with that of the past. This is justified by the fact that short-term fluctuations are oftentimes hard to predict, such as, for example, the COVID-19 pandemic, and long-term trends are much more stable and reliable. We also assumed that trends for e-bike sales would follow the compound growth rate that could be used to model them, and most businesses use compound annual growth rate to measure their own success, and also the e-bike industry is young and expected to expand exponentially with capital investments back into the industry. Furthermore, we assume that the US and EU definitions for e-bikes the same, were the same for the same product. Um, not doing so would result in inconsistent data. And finally, we assumed that time was the only variable necessary for projecting future sales, as time directly influences all their variables. And summing up the effects of all those variables would give us the total change with respect to time. Uh, these are the variables used in our model as referenced in our paper. Since the data provided for US e-bike sales was sparse, we supplemented with additional data from Statistical Research Department for the years 2012 to 2016. Uh, we first performed regressions individually on the EU and the US, and uh, we made a couple of observations. One, we found that their coefficients of their exponents were similar, indicating that growth rates are almost the same. And two, the EU regression had a much higher R-squared value due to the data's density, consistency, and the fact that it omitted the years of COVID-19. To create our model, we adjusted the initial US regression using the EU regression. Uh, we averaged the two coefficients. Since the US data showed a large spike in e-bike sales after COVID-19 that would inaccurately affect the model, uh, we chose to factor in the EU's more long-term, more consistent growth rate uh, to offset this. When we applied the model to the years 2025 and 2028, we projected that in 2025, one and a half million e-bikes would be sold. Considering that in 2022, only 900,000 e-bikes were sold, this is 67% increase in only three years. In 2028, our model projects 230% growth, uh, three million e-bikes to be sold, and each e-bike costing about $2,000 means six billion in sales for the industry in that year alone, which is great news for companies and investors, but it should be noted that this is a further extrapolation of our model, which is somewhat less reliable. Our model strengths lie in its simple, elegant solution, which in this case we thought would outperform an overcomplicated one. Um, also, with high R squared values, not only is our model easy to understand and implement, it is also realistic. Um, and it is easily scalable to any data that becomes available. Furthermore, variability is reduced uh, by the EU data supplementation. On the other hand, it does have its weaknesses. Uh, primarily, it does not limit natural growth at the market's carrying capacity through the implementation of a logistic model, um, which is why it is important not to extrapolate too far into the future as we created a model to work for the short term. Uh, also, it fails to consider any technological advancements or market changes that are not correlated with time, such as a global pandemic. Uh, for a sensitivity analysis, uh, we immediately noticed that the coefficient of the exponent was the biggest factor in the final outcome. 
um, even minor changes in this value caused uh, great shifts in the end result, as noted here in the comparison between the unadjusted and adjusted models, uh, which is why we chose to adjust the initial US regression. And so shifting gears, we next move on to our second question in which we identify potential underlying factors that contribute to eBay growth and evaluate their significance. For our solution, we identified three factors, gas prices, personal income, and lithium ion battery price. And then we use the two-stage instrumental variable regression method to determine causal relationships between each variable and e-bike sales. So we decided to use IVR because it's a method that allows the estimation of causal relationships outside of controlled experimentation. We introduce a third variable called the instrument, which accounts for unexpected behavior between confounding variables. There are then two stages of regression in which the results of the first stage between the predictor and the instrumental variable are later regressed with the response variable. And ultimately, this lets us identify the hidden causal relationship between the predictor variable and response. So we pick the following instrumental variables here that correlate with their respective predictor variables on the left and weren't correlated with e-bike sales. Specifically, we found data on educational attainment, crude oil prices, and engineering PhDs awarded in the US yearly and used that for our IVR. Now, due to the logic underlying IVR, we require several assumptions about the model. And the first is that the instrumental variables should not have a causal effect on the chosen response variable. So for instance, changes in crude oil prices shouldn't cause any corresponding changes directly in e-bike sales. Next, we assume that the instrumental variables do have an effect on their corresponding predictor variables. This allows us to establish causation rather than just correlation. And as one example, educational attainment has a clear correlation with personal income, since generally receiving an advanced degree helps you earn a higher paying job. And finally, we assume that the instrumental variables do not have any causal effects on any confounding variables. So for example, crude oil should have no effect on any other potential underlying factor that contributes to e-bike growth aside from gas prices. And here are the variables as mentioned in our paper. Um, and in our first analysis, we sought to measure while whether personal income had an effect on e-bike sales. In the initial stage of our IVR, we found the effect of educational attainment on income, and we found a strong correlation here as shown by the high R squared value. In our second stage, we took the predicted income to model e-bike sales, and then again, we found a relatively high R squared value of 0.83. And since predicted income is correlated with e-bike sales, we can strongly conclude that there's a strong positive causal relationship between the two. For our second analysis, we again sought to mo model whether gas prices had an effect on e-bike sales. We performed the same steps as the first one. Um, and since predicted gas prices and e-bike sales had a small R-squared value of 0.25, we can conclude that gas prices have little or no causal effect on e-bike sales. Here, finally, for our third model, we look at whether lithium ion batteries have an effect on sales. And since the second step of the IVR results in this moderate R-squared value of 0.49, we conclude that battery costs have a moderate negative causal effect. In conclusion, we determined that income had the largest impact on e-bike sales, battery costs had a moderate impact, and gas prices had almost no impact. For businesses and policymakers looking to understand the driving forces behind the industry, these conclusions shed light on key ideas. The strengths of our model are that we can demonstrate causality instead of relying solely on strong correlations due to us using an instrumental variable regression. This is key as it is almost impossible to determine causality through observational studies. Additionally, we can demonstrate the degree to which these factors impact e-bike sales. For our weaknesses, we said that the regressions are compounded over two levels of analysis, so our model is sensitive to any errors made in the early stages. In addition, we did not include redundancies to mitigate for inaccuracies. And finally, there wasn't much data online due to the emerging nature of the e-bike industry, thus that made our response data less reliable. In our sensitivity analysis, we determined a couple of factors that could have impacted our results. First, all three assumptions must hold true for the solutions to remain reliable. As a result, causality is difficult and tenuous to determine. And lastly, any complications would revert our relationships back to correlations instead of causations. For question three, we were tasked to model the potential impacts of rising e-bike usage on various related factors. To do so, we chose two different factors carbon emissions and traffic congestion, and used a multivariate linear regression to find the general function for any impact. We have several key assumptions for this model as well, mostly due to the nature of a multivariate linear regressions. 
First, we assume a linear relationship between all variables, mostly for simplicity's sake and constraints with our time and data. However, if we had found non-linear relationships, we would simply need to transform the data. Second, we must assume that the independent variables are not highly correlated with each other. If we found multicollinearity through implementing variance inflation factors, we would simply need to change the variables. <clears throat> and finally, we must assume that all variables chosen in the model explain the outcome, because the coefficients calculated will be incorrect if a major variable is left out. For this model, we have a large number of variables. We first have a general model with the variables on screen here, and then we apply this general model to two specific factors. For first, we have carbon emissions, and second, we have commute time with these variables. For the model, we first start with a general function of some impact g. This impact is caused by some number of independent variables, x1 to xn, and every major variable that has an impact should be included in these x variables, which can be determined by consulting literature in the area or a version of IWR from the previous question. Also, only direct variables should be considered, or some impacts will be double counted, and we detail in a paper what we should do if that does happen. <clears throat> 